I'm Kim LeBerry. Um, I'm CTO at Epic Games. Uh, my job involves sort of the, the, the middle ground between the technology that Ray and his team build, the game productions at Epic, and uh, a lot of the artistry that we have to create. So a little bit of everything there. Yeah, I'm Ray Davis. I'm the general manager for Unreal Engine 4 at Epic Games. Um, <clears throat> I oversee, I guess, uh, engineering, support, marketing, all, all the uh, pieces that come together for us to get Unreal Engine out there and support people making cool things with it. So Unreal Engine, you know, if you look at the history of Epic Games, we've always been uh, game developers first, um, and we've built our technology in, uh, alongside that. And at some point, uh, I think some external partner came out and said, hey, can we, can we use your technology? And then the idea of licensing our engine was born way, way back. Um, and these days with Unreal Engine 4, it's, it's you know, our fourth incarnation. We've really gone back to the foundations and um, rebuilt it in a way that's very extensible and it's, it's a great solution for games, you know, for people on make PC, mobile, consoles, that kind of stuff. But also for these emerging platforms, things like VR and the crossover of, of film and, and doing real-time photorealism. And I think with um, you know modern day computer graphics, uh, PC cards, Nvidia, uh, AMD, what they've been doing, um, it's really possible to make a fantastic looking image. So we're seeing a lot of traditional uh, media that would not normally consider game engines using our product. Um, even auto, even um, uh, industrial design uh, usage, architectural usage, all sorts of crazy things are using a game engine now to create beautiful images and beautiful experiences. So obviously our primary business is to make a game engine that supports making awesome games on all platforms. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the modern world, uh, almost every product is designed within a computer. There is some sort of computer model existing for the camera shooting us now, the microphone, pretty much everything is designed on a computer. And now it is possible to visualize these objects in a beautiful um, fashion, interactively. All industries are beginning to, to, to pay attention. So we're not, you know, we're not deliberately trying to turn the engine into something that uh, is not made for making games, yeah. but it, as a side effect of what it can do right now, many people are finding it very useful. Well, one, one thing about trying to make a game and making a fun game is that you, know, you have an idea where you start, but you have to iterate a, a ton to find the magic and then actually mm -hmm. bring it all together. So a part of that, you know, a lot of our engine and development focus is, is the tools and the workflow that allow people to rapidly iterate in real time and collaborate with quite large teams, right? Um, so I think that's where the crossover is really powerful. We have systems like Blueprints, which is like a visual programming language where an artist who has no ability to write code, for example, can get in there and script and add logic to these things so that he's no longer just crafting a, a computer image, he's, he's crafting a, a simulation, something you can interact with. Yeah, Ray, Ray's absolutely right. And, you know, think about, think about a car, you know, we have a wonderful renderer built into Unreal and we can generate a pretty realistic looking car. But with the systems that we have that are uh, systemic within the game uh, um, engine, if you want to make it so that you can drive the car, open the door, switch on the ignition, the lights light up, all these things can be programmed through Blueprint to make intelligent assets. So people are beginning to realize this, that actually the world is not just about static computer graphics that you can just spin around on a turntable, but you want to interact. And VR has become this sort of big melting pot where both, both classical media, uh, interactive media, and, uh, and all come together with for this uh, this new capability where you really want to be able to grab and manipulate and experience things as if you would have done in the real world. So I think from a pure technical perspective, you know, the, the miniaturization of uh, the computer market, cell phones, mobile phones with inertial devices and amazing displays, that's uh, been a driving factor. You can get a really high resolution display in a small package that you can make a head mounted display with. Um, on top of that, the ability to portray realistic images. You know, the AVR has been around for years and years and years. In fact, I had friends 25 years ago that were making headsets uh, with very crude real-time graphics. But the ability to deliver an image now that actually feels plausible to, to, to the viewer is, is possible thanks to the likes of NVIDIA, AMD, and all the graphics research community. Um, and we're able to, you know, and I think the main driving force has not been industry. I actually think it's the things that Ray did in video games. You know, uh, Gears of War was an awesome game that really sort of drove uh, believability of environments and characters. Mm -hmm. And that, that drive and that thirst of the gaming consumer has really pushed the graphics card manufacturers to really push the envelope. And I think, yeah, we're at this sort of junction at this point where things yeah, are possible. I would say from the game industry, it's kind of fascinating because you say this is sort of the, not the first time, but from my world, from growing up in games, it is sort of the first time. I remember, you know, Nintendo had the, the Virtua Boy back then or whatever, but that didn't feel like VR the way we talk about it today. Um, and so I think on, on the software and the tools and the simulation, what it takes to actually craft great VR, I think we've finally got enough of those techniques established that we can go at it again, plus the technology side of it. Um, the other part too, that it's a bit of a cheeky answer, but I think 
I think content creators and, and consumers are actually a bit bored with what we're doing today, to, yeah. you know, and they're, they're looking for the next thing. And me as a, as a creative on the game space, I'm excited by these kind of technologies because it's a new set of problems and challenges to overcome, but also new tools. We can, we can build experiences we couldn't build before, right? I would say whenever I'm feeling the most pessimistic about VR, like, ah, it's still clunky, it's a ways off. And then we happen to show, like, uh, one of, one of the developers, he brought his son in to show him uh, uh, the Smog uh, VR demo we did with, with Veta. And the kid just, it just blew his mind. Like, I, I imagine mm -hmm. he's still talking about it a week later, right? Mm -hmm. And that just, to me, that just says this is inevitable technology, right? And yeah, we may not get there in the next year or so, but man, the number of people piling on, uh, there's going to be some amazing things that, that bring this to life. All age, all age groups, all demographics, you put them in a good VR experience, they are blown away. You know, the quality of the new devices, you know, the Crescent Bay, the, the prototype from Oculus, and the new HCC Valve, the, the Valve hardware that's um, that's going to be coming out is amazing. People really believe that they're in their environments. And, you know, we we, we showed one of our um, one of our earlier demos to, to one of my friend's wives the other day, and she went crazy. She, she <laughs> literally thought that she was in that environment. She's it was amazing. hide under the table to get away from it. <laughs> and, and you don't only just get the, you get like, oh, thank you. It's the best thing I've ever seen. So I like I'm absolutely confident it's gonna go like it's gonna be a monster, monster revolution in entertainment. Well, I was gonna say too on the economics, like I I think there still will be a lot of the exist there will still be a place for the <clears throat> entertainment we have today, right? People will still wanna have that theater experience, you know, passive sit and mm -hmm. watch something or maybe, you know, playing a, a mobile game on your phone while you're you're riding the train to work or whatever, right? Um, but I do think VR is gonna have a far far bigger reach than what the traditional gaming consoles have brought so far. You know, obviously at the beginning, people are going to have to buy the hardware and, mm -hmm. you know, if you want a high-end PC with a high-end uh, headset, it's not going to be cheap. But, you know, when I was a kid and I got bought my Atari 800, they were expensive devices. And all my mm -hmm. friends that had Apples had expensive devices, but lots and lots of people had them because they really craved this new experience. Yeah. So I think, you know, I think it's 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 going to be really popular despite the, the initial expense. And, and you know, there are, there, are, there are definitely the graphics card manufacturers know, the headset manufacturers know they need to get to a price point that is palatable for most people. And Sony, you know, if you've got a PlayStation, you'll be able to get a Morpheus headset, hopefully for a decent price. Um, and that's going to open a whole amount of possibility. You think how many people Sony have with PlayStation 4s right now. It's going to be, it's going to be pretty, pretty, um, a pretty big market, I think, pretty quickly. I think the, the closest parallel that comes to mind is when uh, smartphones are in the market and all the game developers immediately were piling on. You know, the thing with smartphones is there's now a touchscreen. You didn't have a keyboard or mouse or any other kind of controller. Um, and so a lot of creatives, their initial experiences, I'm just going to take my game that I already know and, and kind of mash it on there, not really understanding the, the medium and, and what, what works well there. But then you saw about a year or two years later, people started to really embrace it. I was like, oh, what does it mean to actually, what kind of experience can I build now that I have touch, right? And we learned all kinds of interesting, novel things mm -hmm. that don't make sense on these other platforms. So I imagine it's going to be very similar. Um, you're going to see a lot of people take existing you know, like the 360 uh, panoramic video, right? That's that's a logical first step of, wow, wow, massive screens. But I think as people get more and more in there, they're, they're gonna find something new that, I don't know that anybody quite understands what the ultimate VR killer mm -hmm. experience is gonna be yet. And you know, from, from the um, engine perspective, we have to ensure that it's easy to make an experience in VR and that the visual quality, which is really important for a VR experience, you need to believe the space you're in. And it doesn't mean photorealism, but it means that lighting has to feel natural, reflections have to feel correct, otherwise your brain starts to feel a little bit uh, abstracted out of the experience. You know, it's our responsibility to make sure that it's as good as possible and enable people that aren't necessarily, you know, super high-end AAA content creators to be able to put together a scene. You know, we, 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 have, a, we have a marketplace full of lots and lots of gadgets and uh, assets that people can use to experiment with and it you know it really is the case of hitting a button to go into VR mode in Unreal so we're, we, we you know I don't I don't think the experiences at the beginning need to be big massive things I think people are just you know quite frankly I think people are going to be trading small things initially yeah. until we work out what this language is and it, you know it, there is this this challenge that it's not a movie and it's not quite a game. Sure, we're going to have games in VR, but they'll be different from traditional games. And we're going to have stories like we have in movies, but there are all these constraints. Time in virtual reality is linear, just like it is in our world, not like it is in a movie. In a movie, we have camera cuts. We have actors do take after take after take, and we choose the best ones uh, to, to put in front of the audience. We can't swap takes in the middle of somebody looking at somebody in virtual reality, um, and we have to attract their attention. Sound becomes a really important thing. It's one of the things that we learned when we were working with our good friends at Weta on the Smog demo. Sound ended up becoming one of the most important things, and the thing that we'd left till the very end, because we thought it was just going to be a piece of cake, 5.1 or 7.1 surround mix, and just translate it to VR fine. And it actually wasn't the 
case. As soon as you see something, you know, the size of a 747 with a head the size of a house, you 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 start to expect you have you have spatial expectations of the way it resonates. The where, where where does the voice come from? Is it coming from the lips? Is it coming from the throat? No, in a real creature, it will be coming everywhere. So it actually becomes quite a big problem. And uh, there's loads of exciting things to to solve. You know, just from a computer graphics perspective, you know, I've been in the the, the, the computer graphics industry for a you know, quarter of a century now, and this feels like 1993 again, when Jurassic Park was first, well, first hit theaters, and everybody was like, wow, what does the future hold? This is gonna be amazing. I think we're at the beginning of one of these new rushes where actually anybody, that's, it's so such a level playing field that a kid straight out of school right now can produce an experience that, that may change the world, because we don't really know what the rules are for virtual reality right now, and I think it's a very exciting time.